please subscribe and don't forget to press the bell icon to get notified whenever we upload a new video. Bazaar Morning Call live from the CNBC TV 18 headquarters in Mumbai. पिछले वर्ष की 130 नंबर रैंकिंग से हम लोग 30 स्थान आगे आकर 100 नंबर पर आए हैं। No one thought that we can make a breakthrough jump of 30 in one year. For the last three years, India has absolutely persevered and made made it a point to keep going. India can easily, uh, you know, jump into the top 50. For the larger middle class. Uh, so much of their life has moved online and it's really become easy for them. Good morning. Welcome to Morning Call. I'm Lata Venkatesh. With me is Surbi here. We are missing Anuj today. But, uh, well, I think uh, Anuj's absence is going to be made up by a lot of good news that we have got mm. over the last, what, 12, 15 hours. Uh, of course, there are global tailwinds, but uh, I think it's... Uh, uh, the big news that came from the World Bank with India moving 30 paces in ease of doing business as per World Bank uh, rankings. Uh, we'll have, of course, this is our big story of the morning. We'll talk a lot about it. But, you know, in this big news, we lost some of the other positives also that came overnight. One was uh, the core sector numbers. Oh, absolutely. At 5.2 percent, it's the highest year to date. Hmm. I mean, from April to uh, September, this is the best in six months, fastest hmm. in six months. Hmm. And more importantly, are the uh, uh, earnings numbers. I mean, even if core sector is good, it doesn't have to drill down to uh, uh, individuals stocks but individual stocks will get fired up by the kind of results we got post earnings Bharti was better than expected I mean it can't be very great we know the competition in that uh, space but Africa numbers uh, looking better than expected uh, JSW not bad uh, even if uh, Nigel will squabble about one or two things Indigo superlative numbers uh, Divi is not bad KPIT Excellent yeah, numbers one. again. And even uh, something like a syndicate bank, I would still say the poison is getting out of the system and it was a decent set like IDB I was during market hours and IIFL again, glorious set of numbers. So my point is uh, the market has so many tailwinds today, mm -hmm. the tailwind of growth. Absolutely. Morning, Lata. I think the color of your blouse is just <laughs> right. It's a deep shade of green. And you know, as I was looking at some of the data points that you highlighted and just going back at the month of October, which is supposed to be usually a bit of a turbulent month for equities around the world, no such problem. It is the ease of doing equity investing, if you can call it that, for, well the, <laughs> for the Indian market, for global markets. The Dow is up 4, 4.5%. Four we are up between 5 to 6% depending on which index you're looking at. If you're looking at the mid-cap index, we are up a good 8% on that index. Mm. Individual mid-caps have, of course, run away. And all this happening... Available. Now, all this, again, is something that the market has already factored in. Uh, more taxes. Now, uh, let me just come to the negatives. There are still negatives in terms of the number of construction permits you need, the difficulty of starting business, property registrations. All those are uh, the big pain points. But, you know, when it comes to both insolvency and paying taxes, mm. for me, those are, you know, seminally important. Yeah. If India starts paying taxes more, then, you know, mm. that's uh, that solves so many problems yeah. in terms of being able to put in good infrastructure. But in both these things, mm. uh, while it's good to have the World Bank certify, it is still work in progress. Mm. And that's where the fiscal numbers come in. And if I you, don't think, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, mm. but uh, the parameter on taxation, that is not taken on board the move to GST just yet. That will show up in the next year's rankings. But again, I guess coming back to the point of fiscal, as you're saying, so how does that math now add up, you know, looking at the latest data? The fiscal data? numbers are a problem. Mm -hmm. They do tell you that, you know, we have got up to, uh, whatever, 54 percent of uh, budgeted earnings mm -hmm. compared last year, same time, it was only 52. But the point is, we are adding IGST and CGST. Mm -hmm. And IGST has to be shared with the with states. The states yeah. So that number is something we can't be very sure of. Mm. That's why I come to the payment of taxes. I mean, let's hope that our tax to GDP will rise. As yet, I think we, we can't celebrate it uh, immediately. Mm. We don't know exactly how the fiscal uh, balloon or b burden will pan out this year itself. So I don't know whether the market will jump up too much uh, on... Uh, you know, all these parameters because we've already factored in mm -hmm. the IBC, uh, mm -hmm. the insolvency mm -hmm. code uh, uh, advantages. We've already factored in the GST. Now, for therefore, because of this, will India jump up? 
I'm a little unsure. But your next question is more relevant. Uh, uh, will foreign investors who have been yeah, sellers yeah. bite? And actually, that's why I've got a guest <laughs> uh, for this. Uh, uh, we, uh, we have Jonathan Sheasel of Ashburton joining us now, primarily for uh, the uh, ease of doing business impact. Jonathan, uh, good morning and thank you very much indeed for joining us. Just to refresh your memory in case you didn't look at every one of the numbers, India's ranking in World Bank's ease of doing business matrix has gone up from 130 to 100. And this is the most dramatic uh, improvement that we have seen in our history. It comes on the back of more people paying taxes or at least the tax system covering more people as well as uh, because of the insolvency resolution process that's been put in. Now, uh, does that change your attitude to investing in India? So I've been traveling to India since the late 80s. And just from my small um, you know, areas that I've been interacting with, with the country, it's certainly, you know, that it, there has been a lot of frustrations over the years, um, and, it, and it's always been a country with tremendous potential, but always been one of those conundrums is, 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 is to access that potential has always been quite difficult. So I think anything, um, clearly what this prime minister has been doing, um, this has been a big focus area. Uh, there has been some obviously concrete um, evidence of changes in certain segments. And absolutely, I think it, it is a, um, you know, a, a sort of half pat on the back moment, I think, for India. It is, a, it is a, an achievement. So let's not take that away. But I think the reality is India still sits at, you know, 100. Um, and there is still other areas for significant improvement. And, uh, you know, hopefully um, these other areas will be addressed as well. And I would expect them to be addressed, if I'm honest, or certain, certain of them to be addressed going forward. Jonathan, morning. Thanks for being with us today. So then the basic question that, uh, you know, uh, can you perhaps convince some of the fencers with this so-called certificate now coming in for better business environment uh, in India? Can you convince the fencers among FIIs to start investing in India? I'm not sure if, if one piece of news like this will, will necessarily change the mind. I think it's another positive piece of news which just adds to the incremental positives that you know India has has been showing over the last few years. Um, you know, so so it you know it will you know from an invest from a market perspective, it doesn't make a huge amount of difference, quite frankly. But certainly, if when we're looking at India and we're looking at businesses who want to set up in India, who want to invest in India, which can help the employment situation, et cetera, et cetera, then anything which um, encourages money coming from outside and into India, and, and you know, if it's easier for companies to do that, has got to be welcomed, because ultimately, then it will have an influence on the economy, and then ultimately, that could have a difference on the stock markets. Okay, well, take your point. So immediately, uh, uh, investors may not bite. They will wait for it to percolate to stock markets. So let me come to the stock markets. You know, they've been notching up higher highs with almost every passing day. Is that worrying you or are you all in? Yeah, I mean, clearly, I think there is a global issue with, with the rally. Um, first of all, before we get to the India side, I, I think globally, we're grappling with expensive valuations. Uh, of equities per se, but then of course, if you start looking at bonds and everything else, then you know there is a story to be had for equity. Now, globally, as we see, look at valuations in the U.S., um, even potentially starting to get in Europe, emerging markets generally as a group look quite attractive. Now, India, on a standalone basis, you know, is not a cheap market, um, and that's certainly a concern. And then, even if you look at certain segments of the market, the more quality segments of the market, are trading at eye-watering valuations. So, so there are some areas where clearly valuations are quite excessive. I think the interesting thing for us is following the announcement um, made a few days back about the bank recapitalizations, I think if, if, as an investor, you can be more confident that ultimately India is finally addressing the, the one area which has delayed the recovery, then maybe a bit more cyclical exposure is required and the cyclical sectors are a bit cheaper. So, you know, the headline India looks expensive, but I think there are some interesting sectors still out there that aren't looking too frothy. So, Jonathan, uh, 
are you already starting to invest in these sectors that are not very expensive? For instance, public sector banks, as you mentioned, have you already bought these PSU banks? No, it's we. I, I think certainly the recapitalisation is 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 one of the was was one of the requirements for public sector banks. I think from our perspective, there's many many more before we would regard them as being as as a group, regard them as being investable, um, investable. And and there's a, there, there are a lot of other issues that I think need to be addressed. So, I think for us, we are and have been probably gone through quite some pain of investing in the in the uh, corporate banks, um, private sector corporate banks, and they are looking equally as attractive as the PSUs here, because obviously a revival in the whole corporate side, a revival in lending will benefit these guys as well. So, yeah, we're not keen on the public sector banks just yet, but we're, we're quite keen on the corporate lenders. Okay, uh, so you like private uh, corporate sector lenders. Uh, any other economy facing stocks that uh, you're interested in? Non bank financials, again, there was a bit of a wobble with, with, with some of the non bank financials um, who, you know, done quite well over the last few years. A lot of them, you know, producing reasonably good results. So we're still happy with, with the names we have. We, we don't own any of the retail, the, pri the, the very expensive private retail banks. We haven't for some time. That's been a painful, a painful um, position not to own any of those banks, if I'm honest. Um, and we've stuck with the corporate banks, and hopefully now they'll, they'll, they'll come good. So, um, and we have one regional bank as well, um, City Union Bank. But, that, but that's it. We, we, we don't have too much. Okay, Jonathan. So if we were to give you a blank check of sorts, what would be the pecking order in terms of stocks or sectors? I mean, uh, would, you, would it first be private corporate lenders? Would you like what else is on your radar? Yeah, so I think for us, as I said, we, we, we've ridden quite a lot of pain in, in, the private sec in the private corporate banks. And I think you know, they look good uh, going forward to us here. Um, pharma continues to suffer. We, we're very underweight that sector. Stock there, so that we're looking at that. Look, looks like it wants to base, but it's still probably got a, a lot of headwinds facing it. So I would agree. The, the, the consumption side looks good, but we're probably most excited about getting cyclical recovery. So, you know, we've had a um, exposure to road builder for, for, for some time, infrastructure. You know, broad areas where where we see that if this economy does actually start to gain some traction, some of these more cheaper, beaten down infrastructure plays could be quite interesting. Okay, uh, finally, Jonathan, uh, you know, you began this chat by saying that not just India, but all markets are expensive. Do you worry that something will give? And if yes, what? Yeah, I mean, it's incredible how much political noise has been thrown at markets, but markets still grind higher. Um, I think ultimately, absolutely, it will give at some stage. But I guess the you know when you look at flow, when you look at global investors positioning in equity, I don't think we've reached extremes just yet. Um, it is looking expensive, so these things can get more expensive yet um, in, a, in in the time ahead. Ultimately, you know, I'm a believer in mean reversion, and and something will give eventually. Um, who knows when, and who knows why. All right, that's what even we are going to ponder. Thank you very much, Jonathan Cheezel, for joining us. So, uh, sort of in a way, Jonathan has answered our question. Mm. Global investors will look for this ease of doing business to percolate into higher earnings, earnings. Uh, and uh, therefore, uh, ultimately, we have to pour over those numbers. Actually, on that note, let's get you uh, what uh, some experts are telling us before we start trading this morning. Uh, actually, she's the best of them all. Sakti Seva of Credit Suisse highlights the 16th consecutive month of upgrades to 2018 estimated consensus EPS for MSCI Asia in Japan. She says their chart suggests further potential upside if they continue to track gains seen in prior EPS upgrade cycles. She says while tech is associated with an upgrade of 2.4% to 2018 estimated consensus EPS, she highlights bigger upgrades of 4.6% for energy and 37 for materials. Shakti adds that a key surprise is staples, which are associated with a 2.1% upgrade to 2018 
to 2018 consensus EPS estimates. Okay, so we know where to look. Yeah, but this is MSCI Asia X Japan. I'm waiting to hear the day such calls start coming for our EPS and our earnings as well. On that note, let's get you some money market views as well. Pramit Brambat of Veracity says a weak dollar will help the rupee appreciate for the day. He says a sustainable trade below 64.80 will open further room for rupee appreciation. He says the trading range for the spot USD INR pair will be between 64.50 to 65 today. On bonds, Dawal Dalal of Edelweiss says uh, bond market participants got spooked by reports of possible SLR status to bank recap bonds. As a result, he adds government bond yields hardened at the long end with the benchmark 10-year yield coming in the vicinity of 6.9, a technically significant level. That said, he believes that bond yields are attractive and with October CPI inflation expected below 4%, he expects value buying to emerge in the near term, expects the 10-year uh, benchmark bond yield to trade between 6.8 and 6.9 in the near term. Uh, it's very important that yesterday it didn't go to 6.9. Before mm -hmm. that, there was significant bond buying mm -hmm. and finally we ended at 6.86. So, mm -hmm. uh, you know, as you can see, uh, I don't think your yields are going much higher, at least in the current round. I remember your statement from yesterday that at 6.9%, the whole world will rush in to buy <laughs> Indian bonds. Okay. Well, on that note, uh, let's take a look at what's happening around the world. And the world has been a rather happy place in the month of October. How's November starting off? Over to Manglam for the world view. Well, cheerful green on the American screen in yesterday's trading session. And as November dawns upon us, there has been a big gain as far as October is concerned as well. If you take a look at the Dow, uh, the S&P as well as the Nasdaq, all of them gained anywhere between 25 to 4%. In fact, this has been the seventh straight month of gains for both the Dow as well as the Nasdaq. But 50% of the gains on the S&P were led by companies that choose or take up more than 50% of our time on a daily basis. We have Facebook, Amazon, Apple. We have the likes of Alphabet, which is the Google parent, and Microsoft. Actually, 80% of our time taken by all these companies. In yesterday's session, though, breakfast maker Kellogg's went up 6%. Uh, we had Mondelez, the chocolate maker. That one went up 6% as well. And there were no exercisers because if you take a look at Under Armour, the sports maker company that was down 24 percent itself talking about not exercising the fed is unlikely to exercise its power and not change any rates uh, uh, the new fed chair is likely to be announced on thursday fed governor jerome taylor is the most likely contender out there moving across the atlantic then some green seen on both as well uh, uh, the cac as well as the FTSE. the dax was unchanged the uh, adventure index, Spanish index, that one was up uh, three and a half, three and a quarter percent as well. Aviation stocks have been doing well. Lufthansa did well. Uh, we got numbers from Indigo as well. And now Ryanair too moved seven percent higher on the back of strong numbers across Asia. It's all about electronics. Uh, Nikkei has been aided by Sony, which is up eleven percent. The Korean index aided by Samsung, which is up about three percent. And if you take a look at the SN, SN, uh, uh, SGX uh, Nifty, that one talks about Mount ten thousand four hundred. Okay, uh, Mangalam, uh, you move up 100 paces in the global ranking for wordplay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, absolutely. I'm telling you, the SGX Nifty is a nice shade of green and its uh, future is already pointing out to 10,400 out there. Actually, most of Asia is, uh, you know, doing very, very well this morning. Most of those markets, regional markets are holding higher. So then let's boil it down to stocks. Our entire team is standing by, as always, with the morning CNBC TV 18 list of top 10 stocks for the day. Well, this morning I'm going to start, to start with Varinder, who's pretty much got our stock of the morning with him. It's uh, going on a smooth flight path for Indigo, Varinder. Well, flying high and high <laughs> and how, you know. Indigo, you know, clearly stellar set of numbers reported by the company. They were much, much higher than what people on the street were expecting. Uh, revenue was up 27%. Abitar came at 61%. Abitar margin came at 30%. Uh, you know, no one was expecting Abitar of nearly... 1200 1250 crores but they gave a surprise of nearly 7 1600 crores coming in uh, so there was a beat of 20 30 percent clearly coming in there and net profit was 551 crores also let me make you clear yes there was other income component because of the settlement with the pratt and whitney which was there but that was not much that was 34 percent higher at 214 crores and honestly i am not even looking at profit number you know i'm looking at the abitar and abitar margins number which is way way healthier and even better number, you know, for me is the yield number because yields increased 9%. You know, Morgan Stanley estimate was increase of only 2%. People mm -hmm. on the street were giving a figure of 3, 4, 5% at the maximum. 
the biggest number for indigo is the is is the you know increase in yield at 9% jp morgan has upgraded the stock they have a price target of 1500 rupees so clearly it will see you know uh, jet airways has been running up since last few days uh, i think the leader has come today and importantly the, this stock has been built on skepticism we all know ipo came in stock you know surged mm. then came below ipo price no one believed and now they are really doing good stuff you know and the numbers were really good Oh, absolutely, and huge upgrades, as you point out. So, watch out for Indigo, our stock of the morning. Uh, well, giving it a little bit of competition is going to be Bharti Airtel, on it. Yes, Radha. So, good set of numbers coming in for Bharti Airtel post market yesterday. So, I'll start with the revenue figure. Revenue was down one percent, but this was largely expected. Yes. Moving on to the margins, the margins were a big beat. Came at 110 basis points higher, 36.7, largely because of curtailment of their expenses. But the big, big surprise was the African margins, which came up around 400 bips higher at 32.8 percent, as well as the EBITDA was 24 percent higher, which is their highest in the African business. Moving on to the India business, the average revenue per user came at around 145, largely below expectation because. the last quarter the average revenue per user was around 154 so moving on to the brokerages ubs have come out the note saying that this is a solid result for bharti airtel in a tough quarter as well as they managed the competitive onset of jio well moving on to credit suisse they neutral on bharti airtel but they saying that being able to maintain margins in india was a big thing for bharti airtel as well as the african margins were a big surprise and finally clsa upgraded bharti airtel and they saying that consolidation in the india and the africa business are reviving are very good for bharti airtel and they upgraded bharti airtel to uh, with a target So 637, seeing a scoring around 7.5 times EV beta. So on the back of these good results, I expect Bharti Airtel to open the green today. Okay, so green on Bharti Airtel as well, ringing in the good times in Africa. Thank you, Ronit, so much for that. Let's move to the big steel number that we got yesterday, JSW Steel. Nigel, I know you're going to talk about that EBITDA per ton number, and I was thinking of Tata Steel. There was a miss on Tata Steel, and similar show for JSW. But how bad is it? Is the question? Not too bad, actually. Uh, you know, Serbia. but maybe in fact analysts they were building in higher expectations and that's why it's a bit of a, a mess uh, you know if you just take a look at it we had production numbers prior to the numbers that was a degrowth there but the sales volume numbers did increase telling you that they in, that they liquidated some part of the inventory mm. but the big number that we look at for JSW steel is always the bit up a ton yes it's an improvement on a sequential basis by more than 1000 rupees coming in closer towards 7500 rupees but the street they were building in a number higher than that closer towards that 8000 rupee mark a couple of factors played out their coated steel business that's a smaller part of their business i've been tracking that from it was contributing only 50 60 crores now in the last quarter it contributed closer to 200 crores in this quarter it's contributed closer to 141 crores on the ebitda basis and that's the lowest i've seen in the last four to around five quarters so that's a bit of a miss coking coal prices as well same quarter last year it was at around 100 103 approximately this quarter and on average it was at around that 181 dollars per ton so those are the couple of factors that played out the co- coated steel business remember that's uh, it disappointed because of higher zinc prices credit suisse lata asked me i say what about what is credit suisse saying so this time around i contacted them <laughs> and asked them what are you saying what they have done is that they have cut their estimates for fy18 but they're expecting benefits to accrue in fy19 and that's why they've increased the eps estimates for fy19 they can't to be positive on the stock thank okay, you thank you very much for that nigel it's just that they called the steel and the metal rally first probably 24 months ahead so uh, uh, interesting to see that uh, in spite of cutting eps they have raised their price target okay let's get to mangalam now mangalam house concords numbers uh lata the top line was weaker than es- estimates and which is what led to the weakness across uh, uh the uh, across the board as against our expectations so 5% top line growth that compares with the 11% that we were working with that means the ebitda came in lower than our expectations and the net profit at 223 crores uh, lower than our expectations of a 240 crore bump up but remember optically the net profit has still grown by 41% it's just that the street was expecting a 54% growth on the bottom line it was the exim segment the export import segment that Uh, took the top top line lower that grew by just about 2.5%. The domestic business doing well with a 17% growth. Uh, remember during the afternoon there is the company's uh, earnings call in which they are likely to talk about the volumes and the outlook going forward. Up until then I expect the stock to be a little subdued. Thereafter depends on what the management says. Okay, all right Manglam, thanks for that. Let's move to the NBFCs and it seems good show from IIFL Abhishek. Well, Surbi IIFL has reported strong numbers across its segments. So the NBFC AUM was up uh, about 27% on a YOY but 11.5% quarter on quarter. The gross NPA in NBFC business has reduced to 1.95 versus 2.04. The capital market daily turnover is up 47% on a YOY but 20% on a quarter on quarter while the wealth management 
performance, assets have grown by 33% on a YOY basis. So I expect the stock to be green today. Okay, that'll be a, a big shade of green. And it's, of course, been doing very well. Uh, Ekta, Divi's. Uh, well, Divi's actually, I expect the stock to probably be uh, in the green. And I'll tell you why. Besides the numbers, the numbers looked okay, actually. Revenue was down 11 odd percent. Margins were at around 31 percent this quarter. But we had interesting news overnight from the US FDA, where the US FDA commissioner has said that uh, eight other European regulatory authorities are uh, uh, inspections of plants, which includes the like of, uh, likes of UK, Croatia, Austria, etc. Their inspections are going to be recognized by the US FDA. So if they say a plant is okay, then the US FDA will say that plant is okay as well. So it could actually be an incremental positive for companies such as DB's, Walkhart, IPCA, etc., even Dr. Reddy's, where the European authorities have been okay with the plant for many, many months and years, but it is the US FDA which has had an issue with the plant. So maybe there could be some amount of fill up on account of that, but the, uh, the numbers looked uh, largely okay in, as well. Okay, thank you, Ekta, for that. Let's move to uh, a tech company, KPIT. And Naveen, good show here. Good show, totally. Stellar set of numbers, Surabhi. If you see on all parameters, beginning with revenue, the dollar revenue, that grew by close to 5.5% at around 142 million dollars we were expecting a growth of close to two percent also the margins that came in 50 basis points up at around nine and point eight percent remember the company had already told in q1 that in q2 they will be seeing an impact of the wage hikes by close to 200 basis points so wonder where is this hike in the margins that we have seen but geographically usa has been their clear winner in terms of the increase in margins remember usa contributes close to 60 percent of the overall margins and over there the margins have come in at around 22 percent versus 18 percent also fat which was excited to be down by close to 2% has been up 9% at around 60 crore. Overall, stellar set of numbers. I expect the stock to be in green in today's trade. All right. Thank you very much. Uh, so it's across the spectrum that we are seeing some good numbers. Uh, uh, finally, Syndicate Bank Abhishek. Very good set of numbers coming in from the asset quality picture, wherein the slippages have reduced more than 60% on a quarter-on-quarter -quarter basis to 1,480 crores. That compares to 3,500 odd crores in the previous quarter. The most important factor being the credit cost. Annualized credit cost is at its lowest in last eight quarters. Remember that in six, seven quarters back, this annualized credit cost was at more than 3.5%. Now that is at 1.42%. So gross NP has reduced by 57 basis point on a quarter on quarter to 9.39%. Expect the stock to be green today. Well, we, uh, thank you very much, Abhishek. We keep saying credit cost. Uh, basically, what uh, Abhishek and I are trying to say is the amount of your profit that you have to set aside because some loans are not coming back. That cost mm. used to be very high. You know, 3% mm. of your ma money had to be set aside. Mm. Now you're setting aside only 1.5% of your earnings, which is good. Well, finally, some good news for a mid-cap PSU bank as well. So it is... No, actually, even yesterday, mm. IDBI, although the stock mm. got punished, uh, you know, mm. the rate of incremental creation NP of increases, poison yeah. has fallen to 2%. I mean, and mm. this is, you know, completely an infrastructure facing bank mm -hmm. so that I would consider that that is several PSU banks are mm -hmm. showing some kind of bottoming out let's see what it, it does to PSU banks is a pact because after the IDBI bank numbers came out there was a general sense of selling down on PSU banks let's see what this morning has in store but uh, Anisha is here to round up all the other numbers for us Anisha well, yes, Rubi, thank you for that. I'll start with the good one. The first one being VSC Industries. The bid grew by 40%, leading to a profit jump of around 43%. That should hold up in the green. Other than that, Sanofi India as well, very good set of numbers coming in. Now, the margins expanded by 500 basis points, and that's what driving the 41% growth that we are seeing in profit. Moving on to Blue Star, that one is feeling a bit of blues because in a comparable basis, the revenue declined by 2%. Yes, a bit of silver lining in terms of margins expanding to 5.2%, but um, overall not a very great set of numbers, so maybe just a tad bit of red on that one. Kaya, bad set of numbers because the revenue was flat, but the EBITDA loss expanded to 6.9 crores. Lastly, EH, uh, EIH, Associated Hotels, very poor set of number coming in because the revenue is down 6%, but look at the EBITDA, that one is down 82%. Expect a red on that one. Okay, thank you very much, uh, uh, Anisha, for that summary. Uh, we're just getting back to Ekta for uh, uh, another news that's coming in on drug price fixing, Ekta. 
Yes, uh, well, Lata, let me jog your memory. Remember that uh, in December of 2016, we had seen a sharp correction in many of the pharmaceutical stocks in India as well as uh, globally because uh, there were the price-fixing uh, charges for around two drugs at that point in time. Now, the news overnight is that the probe has been extended to 18 drugs global, uh, in the U.S. markets, including 18 companies. Now, remember that the likes of Aurobindo were named earlier. Now, now the new companies within the Indian gamut who have been named under price fixing include the likes of Alchem, Cadilla Healthcare, Sun Pharmaceuticals as well as uh, a couple of more such as Dr. Reddy's as well. So what this means is that the probe is probably getting serious. They have said that there is conclusive evidence of price fixing and not to mention that even the Myelin president Rajiv Malik has been named in this particular probe. The Myelin stock was down 7% overnight. Maybe the the worst is factored in. Maybe the street is expecting nothing incremental from the US markets and maybe an eventual penalty. But this seems much deeper than and much more serious than what it was just in December of 2016. And certain PSU stocks could be active today. So keep an eye on that. And of course, you know, our Delhi team will come and get to you the exact mm -hmm. details of that important cabinet meeting. Okay. Actually, we will play out uh, Mitab Khan's yes. bite on. Uh, him promising uh, Shireen that a list of uh, companies could be brought uh, to the cabinet uh, for divestment. We'll play that bite in a bit, but you want to recap the other stocks? Yeah, let's quickly run through the list of the morning then. So here's the top 10, and then stocks expected to open out positive are Interglobe Aviation, Bharti Airtel, IIFL, Syndicate Bank, KPIT Tech, Divi's Laboratories, VST Industries, and Sanofi India. Stocks that could be under some pressure this morning include Concord, JSW Steel, Dr. Reddy's, Aurobindo Pharma, Sun Pharma, Glenmark, Kedula, Alcom Labs, Blue Star, Kaya and EIH Hotel. So you've got... Welcome back. Uh, it's time to distill all that we discussed uh, so far into what the charts are saying and will say. Ashwini Gujal, Sudarshan Sukhani and Mitesh Thakkar join us. Good morning, gentlemen. Uh, well, we are meeting at a time when there are lots of overnight queues which are very positive uh, and uh, all the Asian markets are blaring a big sign of green. Ashwini, uh, what does that mean for the Nifty itself? Well, good morning. Uh, today, SGX is up uh, you know, 35, 40 points, but that's not uh, enough to uh, signal a breakout. Maybe the open is a bit better, but I would generally like a 50, 70 point uh, gap up to really take out the range. If that happens, you know, then you should uh, trade on the upside and maybe some amount of expansion may come in because of results, etc. But I will not get overexcited because there's no big macro news. Moving from 130 to 100 isn't really great macro news. So I think while we could break on the upside, the gains may be modest unless uh, PSU banks uh, restart their move. Uh, so broadly, Bank Nifty, if we get past, say, 25,000, 120, 130 on the Bank Nifty futures, and broadly 10,400 on the Nifty futures, uh, that's when uh, you would look to push your trade on the upside. Okay, so um, Ashwin, does that mean that longs should be opened out only after these levels, the two levels that you mentioned? Till then, wait and watch? Yes, if we open above them and hold on above them, because the break has to be fairly clear, because on days like this where the break is marginal, the risk is, you know, there is a false breakout, and by end of the day, you know, you are left ha holding a position at the top. So uh, just wait and watch and see whether there's follow through coming into the market. Fair point. Uh, uh, good morning, Sudarshan. Uh, what would you do? Accumulate longs? Yeah, good morning, Lata. <coughs> Sorry. Uh, we are already long and I hope uh, viewers who are listening to me should be long in the Nifty, the bank Nifty. The indices have done nothing, but the, that's uh, not important. The important part is they have not come down and broken our trailing stops. So the long positions are intact. If you are not long, I think uh, there is an opportunity to go long today also. Uh, the Nifty Bank was in a very narrow range yesterday. And that was the narrowest of two or three weeks, not just five days, seven days. That narrow range cannot last. So the Nifty Bank is giving an impression of having a big thrusting move, up or down. Given the environment, given the benign nature of the Nifty itself, it is possible that the banks may break on the upside. So I would be willing to take that chance and be long. If you are not long, at least buy the Nifty Bank. Your stops are 
10,300 for the Nifty, they are as tight as possible, and 24,700 for the Bank Nifty, and stay long. Mitesh, good morning. How are you reading the picture? Rashmi is saying 30 points don't make much difference as far as the rankings are concerned. But uh, what about the index? Are you willing to start a trade in the morning itself? Good morning, Subhi. Uh, I think it's the Bank Nifty which I would possibly uh, be more interested given the fact that time and again we have reversed from 25, 120, 150 zones and I think maybe we'll open around those areas and if we see a follow through immediately, I think that will be, be one of my first trades in the morning. So let the Bank Nifty get past 25, 150, I think uh, then you know you can look at about 350, 400 points kind of uh, follow through on the upside. And uh, that should, of course, propel the Nifty as well. But between the two, I think the Bank Nifty chart would be more interesting to trade in case we get this breakout. Okay, fair point. Uh, yesterday, uh, the B Bank Nifty also got a little bit of relief from the bond markets. Otherwise, the way the bond, bond prices were falling, there was a bit of a jitter. Okay, let's come to uh, individual stocks. Uh, Ashwini, uh, what are you going with? All buys. Yeah, because uh, the market remains higher and mid-caps are outperforming. And within mid-caps, there's a Gujarat element which is doing very well. I don't know whether it's because of elections or something. But uh, that seems to be working. So Gujarat Alkali is a buy with a stop of 775, target of 800. Gujarat Floro is a buy with a stop of 920, target of 960. GSFC is a buy with a stop of 156, target of 170. GMR Infra is a buy with a stop of 17, target of 25. And Titan is a buy with a stop of 630, target of 655. Okay, point taken. Uh, Gujarat uh, PSU is always better run than other PSUs in the country, but one doesn't know if there's a theme today. So, Darshan, uh, wh what's uh, your game today? Largely buys as well? Well, yes, largely buying and uh, primarily mid caps. Uh, it does appear that the markets are willing to go higher. I, I mean, we can't time them, we cannot tell them go higher today. But it's worth going and being long. Ashok Leyland, which is now already broken out of a trading range, is making new highs in a small range today and uh, willing to go higher. I have explained earlier on Monday, I think that autos themselves, the entire sector is going into upside momentum. One by one, stocks are coming into play. Then pharma is now bottoming out. Again, this is a theme I have explained many, many times. DV's lab is a buy for today, but generally traders and investors should be looking at pharma for buying. That long bear market is coming to an end. Reliance, my favorite stock, is a buy. I mean, you could actually close it and buy it on any day, but today there are reasonably decent patterns to suggest that a short-term trade is in the offing on the buy side. And Torrent Power, which is a remarkable chart, among, among the power stocks, it's doing much better and outperforming. No, I'm not sure why, but because of the chart, I would be willing to buy it. And just uh, to go to that NBFC theme, LIC Housing is also a short sale. I explained earlier, LNT Finance, m and Finance, something is going on. You've already told us what is going on, and the market is willing to accept that theme. It's a short sale. All right, uh, so those are four buys and one selling idea that uh, we're getting from Sudarshan this morning. Mitesh, let's go through your list. Um, so again, uh, my list is more of buys in one sell. I think four buys in one sell. Uh, I have Dabar on my list. Clearly with the numbers, we saw stock break above the earlier levels of 326, 327. So now it becomes a buy. Keep a stop below 325, look for 350 as the short term target. Uh, Reliance Naval, I think, you know, we have seen uh, extremely strong base building around the 51 mark and now it's trying to give some positive signals on the intraday charts. So buy with a stop below 51, look for a target of around 59, half 60. Bal Krishna Industries, very similar setup, intraday buy signals there, buy with a stop at 1680, look for targets of 1755. Uh, the solid sell call is pretty light where the indicators are negative, but I would still want to uh, take a conditional sell over here, let it break below the pivot levels of 777, 776. Then go short with a stop at 791. Look for 745 as the target. And finally, a mid cap cash stocks on buy list. Uh, SL packaging is a buy with a stop at 278 for targets of 300. All right. Uh, thank you very much, Mitesh. Uh, we're going to come back to all three of you with lots more questions. But uh, today, clearly, the auto stocks uh, should be on your radar. I mean, November 1st, on the 1st, you're going to get a lot of macro data. But one set of data which will immediately impact stocks would be the auto sales uh, 
data for the month of October, which will be released today. Uh, Naveen, uh, what should we expect from uh, the various companies? A fairly mixed bag in terms of the auto sales numbers for October, Lata. So last year, remember, because of the advancement of sales, the Dasera sales, that happened in the month of October in, this, uh, in last year. But this year, this happened in September because of the advancement of the festive season. That will be one key reason. Also, remember, that we are working with a higher base for most of these companies. So that will also have an impact. But nevertheless, rural demand, that has been going fairly strong. Now, coming with companies, uh, Maruti Suzuki, that is expected to grow 15% on a year-on-year -year basis. Two-wheelers will be more or less impacted. Hero is expected to be more or less flattish, a growth of nearly 1%. TVS is expected to be driving and leading the overall uh, two-wheeler pack with a 10% growth. On the other hand, Bajaj will be growing by 8%. M&M tractor segment as well as escorts. Remember, the tractors have been working on a very high base from last year and now the tractors' demand is expected to be subdued from here on in these next months. So escorts is expected to grow in October and uh, degrow by 9%. Meanwhile, M&M, that is expected to degrow by close to 13%. The outlier in the pack will be Aisha's Royal Enfield sales. That is expected to grow the consistent 24% in this month also. So overall, a mixed bag for auto sales in this month. Back to you. Why? I'm telling you that the SGX Nifty is holding up uh, nice and steady. In fact, right now also it's looking at a gain of just about 31 points. Cooled off a little bit from the highest point of the day. But nonetheless, the colour is green across Asia and on this index. Mr. S.P. Tulsian of sptulsian.com now joins us this morning. Mr. Tulsi, and always a pleasure speaking with you. So lots of earnings to discuss and go over. And I first want to start off with the steel numbers. Now, JSW Steel, like Tata Steel, people can argue and nitpick that the EBITDA per ton number was not as much as, uh, you know, some analysts were expecting. Uh, do you think this can put a dent on the rally in the stock price or will it just continue? No, I don't think that that should be taken, uh, you know, just a bit up per ton. Because if you really take the situation for JSW Steel, two points comes in, in reply to that. First is that the integrated operation, the company which they have acquired at Dolby, you know, from the from the Mittals, that is now seen improving their performance. And second is the product mix. Sometimes, you know, in the quoted products, they have, you know, maybe the lower margins because of the rising zinc prices and because of the long contracts they had with the with the buyers of their of, of their products, you know. And in that case, they have to compromise because we all know that the zinc prices have seen on an on a uptrend trend and sometimes there is a lag effect so I don't think that that should really be the situation of analyzing because if you really take the call on the standalone number of JSW steel they have come out extremely well if I just take the PBT straight you know without going into all the cooking coal or maybe the other 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 this thing the PBT has risen to 1285 crore from 607 crore sometimes you know I, I don't understand these all estimates you know which just go AY because you should focus on the financial numbers and sometimes there is a lag effect so I don't think that that should really be the situation of analyzing because if you really take the call on the standalone number of JSW steel they have come out extremely well if I just take the PBT straight you know without going into all the cooking coal or maybe the other 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 this thing the PBT has risen to 1285 crore from 607 crore sometimes you know I, I don't understand these all estimates you know which just go AY because you should focus on the financial numbers having posted by the company and those numbers have really come out very very well if you again on a standalone basis on a sequential basis pat has doubled from 419 crore to 845 crore and if you take a consolidated one as I said that there is no improvement on the consolidated one on the bottom line but standalone numbers are excellent and that pertains largely for their Bellari unit and uh, because of this product mix sometimes you have the lower EBITDA per ton. Okay, uh, uh, Mr. Tulsan, good morning. Uh, Bharti, you think uh, there was anything that investors should take note of in the numbers? No, I don't think that there is any kind of, again, you know, it's the pleasure of the lower estimates and, you know, meeting those estimates. Because if you really take the situation, even on a sequential basis, I don't know why, or what is there to really cheer in these numbers. Sometimes, you know, we say that, okay, the numbers have met the estimates, but estimates are not reliable or having any kind of relevance. Because come on the Indian operations again, India EBIT has seen a fall from 1260 crore to 1140 crore on a sequential basis. That clearly indicates that the pressure is seen continuing. Yes, Africa operations have shown the uh, traction in the, in the number from 500 crore to 850 crore. But can that really justify? So yes, you can maximum you can say that Bharti Airtel has, has shown a, a what you call neutral kind of performance. Because even if you take the EBITDA, because of this, if the African operations would not have shown a rise of 300 crore, the EBITDA, you know, because of that, the EBITDA is seen constant at about 8,000 crore, again 7,800 crore in the, on the sequential basis in the previous quarter. 
Okay. So, actually, <coughs> I, I want to discuss that further with our uh, maybe our technical experts as well. So, Mr. Tulsen, what's the call on the stock now, on the Bharti stock? This 30% rally that we saw in the month of September, uh, is the stock going to be vulnerable because of, as you're exp explaining, the core performance has uh, not really sort of, you know, uh, has not been very sparkling? See, if you really see the rise in the share price of 30%, that has, you know, happened largely on some other reason, maybe because of the Tata Tele subscribers having come into the fold of Bharti Airtel. And secondly, the pricing power seemed to be returning back to, 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 to these three telcos because of the reliance Geo now having stopped the pricing war or, you know, they have started, you know, increasing the prices. So those can, but those things will get reflected into the Q3 or may, may not be in Q3, in Q4 or maybe in the FY19 numbers. And I don't think that till then you know you re can really justify a further re-rating or a buy call on the stock having re which has already risen by about 30 percent considering this q2 numbers okay uh, well the the one that perhaps will shake the market will be the indigo numbers uh, mr tulsia yes very good numbers again you know because if you buy i think again that yoy comparison is the right one and they have in fact demonstrated the efficiency on all parameters and again coming on the on the on the pvt you know having risen from 180 crore to 770 crore shows that yes the things are seen on an improvement but that is the case in fact with all airlines and this indicates that because of the robust number having seen from 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 indigo one can expect the similar kind of traction coming in at least in spicejet if not in jet airways so yes extremely robust number from indigo but that you know one can keep an eye on spicejet to see the similar kind of uh, if not similar the better kind of improvement in the in the in the financial performance Okay, um, so speaking of some more numbers, uh, you know, anything from the mid-cap universe, Mr. Tulsian, that really caught your eye? I mean, VST, a smaller stock, smaller cousin of ITC, some good numbers coming in there. Uh, anything else that really capital first, of course, we were discussing even yesterday. But something that stood out as a clear winner where maybe a fresh purchase can also be initiated. Yes, there are two or three stocks, you know, one is Sanofi, which has come out with very good numbers. IFL Holdings have posted very good numbers. Chola Mandala Finance has posted very good numbers. Syndicate Bank, you know, because I'm, I'm referring all the results which have come out after the markets having closed yesterday, you know. So these are the four numbers on which we'll, we'll advise, you know, going with the buying call. Okay. Yes, uh, uh, we, we discussed uh, some of those in our top ten as well. Uh, Mr. Dulce and Blue Star, uh, I mean, uh, should we be very disappointed with the fact that the revenue uh, actually was so flat? See, I won't be because generally if you see the Blue Star, you know, has not been seen the kind of consistency in their financial performance. Sometimes, you know, you, I, am, I am unable to, I don't have any reason or explanation for that. Sometimes you see a shift, you know, happening in the in the next quarter or having a book in the earlier quarter. So maybe taking that into account, I won't be calling it as a as a disappointment because on a relative basis, if you really take a call on the on the Voltas having run up so much, then one can always say that Blue Star is not seen expensive. But yes, you don't have any kind of comfort, much comfort on the on the results having seen from the company. Okay, and finally, a question I wanted to ask you about uh, this uh, cabinet meeting. Uh, you know, we believe that some companies will be taken for divestment, but the other uh, buzz in the market is something about ethanol and sugar could also be announced. Uh, uh, would you wait for any announcement from the cabinet on sugar? See, Lata, it's very unfortunate. In fact, in fact, I've, I've been touching on this for last one week when I gave a buy call in the morning show. Also, I've said two things that one market has unable to take a call that the purchase tax has been subsumed in GST and just highlighting the SAP hike of 10 rupees per quintal, in, which is in fact effectively is 4 rupees per kg because 6 rupees used to be the purchase tax which has been subsumed in GST. And in the same breath, if you if you recall in, in the morning show, I've said that the ethanol price hike is due, which is anywhere between 2 to 4 rupees per litre. Because if you really see the financial performance for all these companies for FY17 or maybe H1 of FY18, none of them have got the advantage of the higher ethanol prices but that is going to be booked and seen in the in the in the crushing season which has uh, which is being started now in the up or end and in maharashtra so yes i'm quite positive and it is certain that the ethanol prices are going to get increased whether they, they, they get increased by two rupees per liter or three rupees per liter it is difficult to say but that will be seen another booster for the up based sugar mills because of the higher production better realizations and but lower than anticipated sap high having seen because these were the three points 
or the triggers which I have recommended, which I have included while recommending Dalmia Bharat sugar three or four days back in the morning show. Yes, you did, sir. So it would be Dalmia Bharat and the others as well, Dwarikesh, Balrampur, all of them. Four sugars, your... Dalmia Bharat, Dwarikesh Sugar, Triveni Engineering, Balrampur, okay. Chidi, DCM Shriram Limited. In fact, they all qualify for the, for, for, for the, for the investment because they all have the good presence in UP. All right. Uh, we're coming back to you, um, Mr. Tulchan, with more questions. Uh, uh, for the moment, let us also get the commodity queues in. Uh, Manisha Gupta has joined in uh, with a roundup. Uh, tell us, Manisha, crude still at $61. Well, it is, and a third straight day when we have the prices holding above those kind of levels. Well, you have seen bullish cues come in from OPEC, from the uh, in global inventories, and also the markets are anticipating the demand to continue to be on the higher side, and that's keeping the prices higher. It has been incoming, and we are now 38% uh, of 2017 lows that were hit in the month of June. So the U.S. crude oil prices and Brent both are doing very positive. But what really has surged up in last few minutes really has been the metal prices. If you look at the Shanghai exchanges, almost everything is trading between 2 to 3% on the higher side. And it is the nickel prices, which are 6% up right now, trading at an 11-month highs. There have been various reports in the last couple of days on how the electric vehicle battery demand will lead to a nickel price surge, demand on the higher side as well. And the kind of demand that is being put forth, the supplies do not seem to be catching, at least in the next two to three years are the reports coming in, and that has been supportive. Even on LME, the nickel prices have gained up by 7% in the last, last 24 hours. And we are looking at a two-year highs on nickel into that as well. And not just that, if you look at uh, lead prices, zinc, they are up nearly 3%. Iron ore prices are trading up 2%. So everything in metals, ferrous and non-ferrous, is trading quite in positive. Okay, thank All you. All right, Manisha, thank you very much for that. So shining bright as far as nickel and some other base metals go. Uh, this, is very positive, this is very positive news for SBI. Yeah. If they've cut retail term deposit, uh, cost goes down that much uh, prospectively. Uh, I'm very confident that there is going to be a lending rate around the corner. See, normally when you cut deposit rates, mm -hmm. it anyway works into the MCLR. But more importantly, now very soon they will get more capital. And uh, it will be anybody's guess that SBI will be the uh, first in the list uh, to be rewarded with uh, capital. That buffer would mean that there could also be a lending rate cut. So this is positive certainly for SBI. But I wouldn't be surprised if this is interpreted by the market to mean lower uh, loan costs. And uh, that will have a concomitant impact, negative for NBFCs, positive yeah. for real estate, mm. positive for consumer goods. Uh, uh, well, th this is an important... Positive for asset managers. It will just push more and more people to <laughs> put their money in mutual funds. So the one that's going to be listing shortly, I guess, in a great environment. Perhaps, yes. <laughs> uh, definitely. Look at the kind of subscription.